All right. All right. All right. Yeah, we'll red dot. Can you see that from there, Chris? Yes. Yeah, All right. Ah, so, uh, yeah. You're getting Snapchatted. I'm Snapchatting. I'm trolling the troll, too. Right <laughs> <laughs> okay. can't be conducting things that way. That's not how business works. It's just that Matt Pless is here today <laughs> with us at my parents' house on our deck. Um, and uh, he's a, a wonderful, incredible folk punk musician. Is that accurate, first of all, folk punk? Is now that Chris that is, true? we're letting Chris put words in your mouth. Oh, I don't know. It's whatever you want to call it. You've been doing this compared to a scene of, you know, most of the musicians. So there's a rat over there, Chris. Where? I guess the question is... How is the community we're in now compared to how it's been for the past however many years? You know. Oh, um, uh, the community now is a lot more connected, and I think Facebook and things have helped with that a lot. The internet, uh, um, like you know, uh, back like um, in the sidewalk cafe days and stuff like that, it, it seemed a little harder to network. Uh, at least for me, I had a harder time networking and getting like tours together that actually meant something, where you were playing for people who cared. Uh, I, I think that. Uh, the audiences uh, in this circuit right now are much more receptive to what people are singing about, and um, 
you know, that's really cool. Definitely the, the, the time in the world right now, what's going on with stuff probably makes people more receptive to it. I mean, you're talking like, uh, 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 like a, uh, a generation raised in like the shadow of like 9-11 where there's been nothing but just like uh, broadcasted chaos for like, um, you know, a decade and some, and some. I think a lot of music played in uh, that scene uh, uh, definitely reflects what's going on um, uh, in the world today. And, you know, uh, I think that's why it appeals to uh, the kids listening to it in that age group you're speaking of. And this woman asked us, um, she was like, is a band uh, not doing their job if they're not talking about politics? I used to have this joke that was just like, well, I don't think music changes anything except your outfit. So, like, <laughs> I don't know, but I, uh, in, in later years I've reflected on that, and I think that's not completely true, although it's kind of funny. You know, I think, you know, like, write what you feel about it. If you're feeling that, and then put it out there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say, like, if, you know, someone's not writing political songs, that they're, they're not doing their job. Um, I don't know if I agree with that completely. But I think that an artist has a responsibility to, you know, do something positive, I think, with their music. Um, or, well, any art, I guess, not just music. I mean, you don't want to be putting, like, negative shit in the environment. I mean... It's like littering. It's like, you know, mental pollution <laughs> or something if you're doing like putting out really horrible things in your art. So, so how much longer do you think humanity is going to be around? Oh, probably till the end of this interview. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed, uh, as someone who's been traveling for a while, uh, a difference between what it's like being out in the United States now versus how it was, you know, 18 months ago or whatever. Well, I think one of the most like, uh, noticeable things for me is like uh, a lot of the uh, ideas and, um, uh, you know, uh, concerns and, you know, things that were going on <coughs> within <coughs> um, within the, and actions uh, that were going on within the DIY culture in like 2010 and 11, 12, uh, were specifically in that culture mostly and now I see that those same things coming out into the well, mainstream I, I see more of that happening in people who wouldn't necessarily only be found in like a basement like uh, you know dyed hair and whatever you know so it's like you're seeing more like uh, people I think adopt or uh, express interest in those um, topics and things uh, and concerns uh, now than you did five years ago the the use of of humor when you're fucking writing about like the end of the world and drugs and heartbreak and all this like heavy shit using silliness as a as a tool to relay that message i wonder if you have anything to say about that if that's something that you're excited about doing I, I do it all the time. When I used to busk in New York in the subway stations all the time, I started to notice my the handful of like witty lines that were like clever little wordplay and stuff and uh, double entendres and stuff that I would have uh, um, that I would that I would uh, put in songs. I noticed that like, those lines were the ones that would make people stop and turn their head and kind of like mm. like snicker and like I noticed that that's what got their attention. Um, and then they come over and give me a dollar. They listen more. They'd skip the train and listen to the rest of the song. You know. So I, I think like there's a way of like saying things that uh, people you know. Uh, gravitate towards uh, easier than uh, other ways of saying them. So I, I, I think humor and wit are important, and I think you can accomplish a lot with them if they are executed in the right way. Do you do anything differently, or anything to prepare, or, or <laughs> is you deliver any different if you're playing for an audience like you were last night, and like a, you know, in a basement, when you know you're with your people, versus something where you're going to be playing. Um, playing for an audience that isn't already like a hundred percent down with a hundred percent of your message, like that you might, they might not have the lexicon down. They might not agree with all your viewpoints. There do could you, even you, possibly be Republicans in the room, <laughs> hypothetically. Do you, uh, do you do you change anything with, with with your performance when you do that? No, I play everything. I play all the songs the same way. One of the coolest things <laughs> I do notice is that. Uh, when I play places where you don't necessarily, that are outside the uh, folk punk scene or the radical community, uh, some of the stuff I sing about, um, uh, people, I'll see people who normally wouldn't be hearing that kind of thing expressed in a song because it's not on the radio or not in like their average, like, you know, bar or club that they're hanging out at. And they'll hear a line, they'll come over and really, really listen to the rest of the song. When it's done, they'll be like, oh my gosh, you're singing about the stuff that I like was waiting for someone to sing about. Oh, this is great. Like, they're just really surprised that like yeah. they're singing about these things. And, uh, to me, it's always like a reality check because I, I feel like the, the DIY community is a very, it's, it's like a bubble, you know? Uh, I think that's kind of cool um, when you can change someone's thoughts or maybe surprise someone who wasn't expecting that to come out of uh, a singer at a club. Um, but, you know, uh, no, I don't change anything. Sometimes I don't even change much of my clothes <laughs> on tour. <laughs> how, many, how long do you, to, does a pair of socks last for you when you're on tour? 
I'll have oh. to change your socks. <laughs> Someone knows exactly why I'm smiling right now. Um, every single day, sometimes twice in one day. Wow, that's mm -hmm. impressive. This is called The Boy in the Bottle. This is really Take Old English 40. <laughs> probably know, but he's so charming, he's so slick, he's witty with the ladies and they can't resist, so there's the plot now, here's the twist, when I pop that top then his lid will flip, he makes his entrance down the 12 steps in my mind, and takes a seat beside his partner. My decisions and they say sit down cause you're rocking the boat But we can't stop here when there's one too many to go Fast talking, the alcohol is flowing He's picking fights with whoever's around Takes gambles on more than he can handle He's all dressed up and he's ready to drown He's just a part of me sometimes Personality that always splits the tab When I go out he buys the rounds Until I've crossed the line Between little old me and the boy in the bottle He's the devil walking by my side Yeah, yeah, well, he won't stop knocking They say he's got a problem The glass half full till I find him at the bottom And they say sit down cause you're rocking the boat But we can't stop here when I didn't have a guitar, so like any smart singer-songwriter, I just decided to go hitchhiking. So I just hitchhiked around the country without a guitar and <laughs> just thought I'd see what I would find. And then one day, by this gas station, there was this old dude with one eye just like chilling there, playing some blues. And I was looking at him and watching him, and I was like, cool, man, chilling. I forget where I was. I was thinking like, a, I think like Wyoming or something. But um, anyway, uh, we were talking, and he looks at me, and he goes, hey, man, it's like, I think I need to give this to you. And he gives me his acoustic guitar. And he says, I hope this takes you everywhere you want to go. And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah, I, like, I have to go. And I was like, okay. And that guitar right there, that's the one that came from. Get the, the fuck yeah. out. I'm serious. Like, that's, that's how this all started was I was in Wyoming and this guy with one eye gave me his guitar. And I was like, well, I guess I got to start traveling and playing music now because I got a guitar. And there we have it.
That's how I met y'all. Yeah. Damn.